Hello, and welcome back to Evolve with Dr. Laura Basha. It's very nice to be with you again. Uh, this is the month of May, and this starts the beginning of uh, the book excerpts, that my forthcoming book that will be published hopefully in June. And if you look to the right of your screen on the Dr. Laura page, you will see a little block that says writings. And in that little block, uh, each month from here through December, we'll be putting um, an, an excerpt from each chapter of the book. And this month, uh, there's a little bit of an excerpt from the introduction and from chapter one. So today, I'm going to be talking with you about that um, the excerpt and, and chapter one, and hopefully give you a little bit of an indication about what the book is about. Um, my reason for writing the book is I, f I really wanted to um, pass on, as best as I could, the basic principles and, um, uh, and concepts that are behind the coaching training and transformational organizational work that I've done over the last three plus decades. Uh, I wanted to make it available to people that um, in all walks of life because I think it really could be a contribution to to folks. So that's really the the intention behind these conversations with you and these excerpts and hopefully you will take away not just uh, interest and maybe wanting to read more about it, but hopefully you'll take away from these conversations, short as they are, uh, something valuable for yourself, uh, something that is a contribution to your day to day and and uh, through the next month until the next conversation that we have. So let's just jump in. Um, uh, the introduction asks the question. Um, you know, do you have any area in your life experience that you would like to have some kind of insight in to facilitate it moving forward? You know, is there some challenging situation that you have in life that you feel entangled in and you would like to experience some sense of freedom? It may even be so challenging that you feel sometimes hopeless about the possibility of it changing. So one of the things that um, w is a, the beginning shift, the beginning transformational shift, is to start to look at the issues or problems that are presented to us in life as actually exactly what you want to be showing up for yourself. Like, given what you'd like to be creating in your life, consider the possibility that a problem or a challenge that's showing up for you or some kind of block or an experience of a block is actually the opportunity to be present to the very next thing that if you handled it, it would open the door to have more access to living the life that you want, if that makes sense. So, for instance, let's say you're having challenges, a financial challenge, and so you come up against a financial block, and you have to uh, really um, distinguish what the issue in this financial block, what the problem is, you know, where the mistake was made, what is it that you weren't paying attention to that had this financial block show up? And in the process of addressing that, you get a lot of clarity about how to have more grounding in your finances, right? So, so it really is a transformational principle. And actually, most leaders who are really wanting to generate themselves to be more effective leaders in the world are more interested in the things that aren't working, um, even more than the things that are working. I mean, they're interested in things working, but they know that if they can see what's not working, they can shine the light on what's not working, and they can start to get at the, the issue that's keeping them from moving forward or keeping their organization from moving forward. Well, that's true for all of us. So one of the things that this book will be 
um, articulating will be exploring is how do you distinguish what these blocks are? Because often they're just old patterns of operating. They're old thought systems that used to serve us, that we created or we, we sort of um, made sense to us back when we were having that particular, a particular issue and we created this, this um, solution for that particular problem. But when we shine the light on it today, what we see is that even though it was helpful to us many years ago, sometimes when we were even children, that it starts, it operates over the years in such a way that we're not even conscious of it operating anymore. It's kind of a default setting. It's just how we automatically respond to things. But when we are actually willing to look at these patterns without judgment, which is key, you don't want to judge yourself for the ways that you make choices and operate because at a certain point in time, those choices made sense. They were good choices to make, probably even brilliant. But because they're now kind of under the radar and because we've matured, and we forget about them, we still make choices from those old ways of operating. And when we start to shine the light on the problem and can distinguish what the old way of operating was, we can sit back and go, well, no wonder this result is happening because that's what I've been thinking. And that is just not how I see things anymore. But now that I see that I've been operating from that, I have the possibility of consciously choosing a different way to operate. Consciously choosing is the key to transformational shift. Consciously choosing is, is, is the key to creating the life that you want, the life that you only dreamed that you could have. This is not Pollyannish. This is not airy-fairy. It's very pragmatic. And if you're willing to look at yourself without judgment, and even develop a sense of humor about the ways that you operate that don't work for you anymore, if you're willing to deal with that, then you really are, you've really got 90% of what it takes to actually start to create the life that you want. It is possible. It truly is possible to have a life of sustained well-being and happiness in spite of circumstances. Now listen, I am not saying that you will have a life that doesn't have challenges. That's just unrealistic. I've worked with thousands of people over the years. I've worked with people who are very successful and very uh, financially stable. I've also worked with people who don't know where the next meal is coming from. I've worked with very young people. I've worked with elderly people. I've worked with people who are who have um, psychological challenges. And I will tell you that my experience is nobody gets off the hook. Being alive is really about learning and growing and developing. And life throws curves at us no matter how well we plan our lives, no matter how, how mature and conscious and, and, and the integrity with which we make our choices. Life throws curves at us. And the reason life throws curves at us is so that we can evolve and grow and develop and become more compassionate and more, um, more uh, respectful, more humble, and more contributing human beings. So this book offers tools and a methodology, a paradigm, that actually will ha uh, 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 allow, uh, facilitate you, give, have you develop the capacity that's within you to make the kind of shifts that you want to be making in life, to create the life of contentment and happiness and well-being that you want. Uh, so, in discussing the principles underlying uh, the paradigm that that I'll be, that I'm writing about in the book. It, 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 the, the, the principles point to a continuum of thought and a real understanding about how the role of thought 
creates our experience of life. We don't necessarily see our experience as directly connected to our thinking. We maybe intellectually entertain that, but we don't really discipline ourselves to pay attention to what we're listening to. What thinking are we listening to? What thinking is behind the choices that we make? Uh, this continuum of thought moves from thinking that uh, that is effective and influential uh, as opposed to thinking that appears to be influential but it's actually an illusion. And being able to distinguish the quality of our thinking gives us access again to be able to consciously choose how we want to be perceiving life, how we want to be generating the experience of life that we want to be having. So what we will be uh, getting clear about is how every human being on the planet functions psychologically. Regardless of age, regardless of culture, regardless of gender, there's a way that the human psychological system operates. And when you start to understand basically the operating system of the psychology of human being, you start to be able to see that your own thinking, the, the things you're coming up against, it's not so personal. That every human being struggles with uh, what it means to be a human being and how come what you want is not what you're experiencing. You know, there's a saying, there's no one out there that's all over here. And this book starts to uh, clarify the truth in that statement. And when you start to see that it's really all over here and that the life experience you have is the creation of your own thinking, not like something to blame yourself for, or not like something to judge yourself for, but really something to awaken to, you'll start to feel the freedom of, of empowerment, the freedom of of, of having the responsibility of creating your own life. You won't feel at the effect so much of what's happening around you. You won't be taking life so personally. You'll be able to be in the world navigating the circumstances that are happening to you while maintaining a, a, a core of peace and serenity and compassion and well-being. So thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoy the excerpt uh, that's in the writing block. We'll continue this conversation, and by the uh, end of the year, hopefully before the end of the year, we will really start to be laying the groundwork for seeing how to maintain, sustain a life of well-being and happiness. Take care. Have a wonderful month. Talk to you next time.